What's up everyone? Welcome to Apple Insider. I'm Andrew on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And I'm annoyed. I get this pop-up all the time. And I guarantee you a bunch of you guys get like the same pop-up. This one. Right there. And honestly, it's maddening. It is so frustrating to say that my iPad storage is full. Because I don't have that many apps on here. I don't have that much. But somehow my storage is constantly full. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to check your storage on your device, and we're gonna specifically dive into what Apple calls the other section. That can often take up a bunch of data and cause you to get stupid messages like this saying you're out of storage uh, on your iPhone or your iPad. So we're gonna look at what that data means and how to get rid of it. Let's go ahead and dive in to today's video. So first, let's start with, I guess, the basics. How to check how much storage you have on your device and where it is all going. So on your iPhone or iPad, you're gonna go ahead and jump into the Settings app. Where else? You're gonna scroll down and tap on General and then go down to iPhone or iPad Storage. So once you tap that, it's going to take a little while to load, especially depending on the size of your device. This is a 512 gigabyte iPhone, so it might take a few minutes longer than your iPad or your iPhone that's rocking 32 or even 64 gigs. Uh, it just kind of itemizing where that storage is going, what apps are taking it up, all of that. Now, something to note here, it's going to load eventually, but it still may not be that accurate. Let it load even longer if you're not sure, uh, even just a few more minutes, because it can actually keep going through. Like They put a bunch of stuff into other, and then they may reallocate that back to different apps and such, as it kind of continues to index where that storage is going. So especially for larger devices, it may take a little bit longer and you may want to hold up a little bit more just to make sure everything is accurate. So mine's already loaded. So again, 512 gigabyte iPhone, I've used 345 gigs of that. But even right now, it doesn't give me my categories at the top. It just tells me how much so far that I've used. It gives me some rough stuff down here, but my categories at the top, not yet loaded. Now, once it's loaded, you can see all the different categories where my storage is going. But that last one, that other category, is what I want to dive into. Now, it just kind of gives you that just other. It doesn't really spell it out for you. So what is other storage? Well, that can be a bunch of different things. It can be series alternative voices, uh, keychain data, fonts, dictionaries, uh, tons of user logs and caches. And that's really true if you stream a lot of content, especially from third-party apps. They could be storing that content on your phone. It could be you know, TV shows, um, music, anything like that. And they could be just caching that stuff locally on your device and not clearing it as they should be. So it doesn't really get allocated to a certain spot, but it's still is stored on your phone. And your iPhone just doesn't really know where to categorize that data. So it just sits there in that other category. And there are a few ways to work on getting that other category smaller. The first thing to try to reducing that other category is to restart your iPhone and then clear Safari's cache. Safari can build up quite a big cache on its own. So here, you just go into settings on your iOS or your iPadOS device, go down to Safari, and then hit clear history and website data, and then tap to confirm. That's gonna go ahead and remove quite a bit of stuff. In our demo, we actually removed about a gig and a half just by doing that on an iPhone 11 Pro not my iPhone 12 Pro here. But we can clear that cache from other apps as well, including third-party ones. So again, we're gonna go back into settings, go to general, and then go to iPhone or iPad storage. We're gonna wait for this to load once more, and when we scroll down the list, we can see all of the different apps that are being used on my device. If we jump into any of those, we can see how much data they are using. Now, they may have documents, so I'm looking at the GoPro Quick app, and I can actually see all of these uh, images and everything that are stored on the device itself, and I can swipe across any of those and delete them, which can free up some space, or if you see an app that you really feel shouldn't be taking a lot of space but has a bunch of stuff cached on there, you can always remove the app and then re-download it to your device. So that's kind of your brute force way of making sure that cache is all cleared out. And it just happens sometimes, but you can at least see how much you know is going to the app, how much is going to the documents and data, and if it makes sense to remove and re-add that app. Now, if you are deleting anything, just be careful. Don't delete anything that you think you might want. If I'm looking here my GoPro Quick app, I don't want to inadvertently delete a piece of content that I had created that I want to save. So while it does use almost eight gigs of data here, I'm not going to delete any of these pictures or audios or anything like that because I don't know exactly what they are. But I have to remember that that could be a big source of where my data is going. 
to slim up space in general, you can take any of the cost cutting solutions that Apple offers in that iPhone storage pane. So there'll be these recommendations here at the top. It'll let me offload unused apps. So apps that I've downloaded that I don't really use that frequently, I can save up to 97 gigs in my case by offloading those clouds and then re-downloading them when I need them on the fly. I can review my TV downloads. I've got a bunch of stuff saved here on my phone. If I delete any of those, that'll save some space. And I can review large attachments. So if I'm looking at my uh, attachments on messages, I can see some really big files that have been shared that are stored here. I mean, this one video here at the top is 1.16 gigs. So that would be another easy way to free up just some storage in general. It's not other storage, but just storage in general. Speaking of just slimming down storage in general, kind of overarching, uh, one other possibility is to offload your messages. So if you go to messages, you can go to keep messages for and choose between forever, a year, and 30 days. By doing that, you can free up a little bit of space on your phone. Now that said, it doesn't do as much as it used to. So before, I would only do it the shorter amount and it would clear up space on my device. But Apple's been doing the iMessages and iCloud, which does offload some of that data to the cloud and not on your device. So for me, I now keep mine on just keep forever. So I always have all of my histories and I can search through things. And it's kind of handy. But if you are worried about space on your phone, that is something that can help free up a little bit more space. If you drop that down to even 30 days, it's going to blow away more of that data from your phone or your iPad. Finally, the biggest way, the way to get all possible other space reclaimed on your iPhone or iPad. This is not a fun way by any means, but this is the only way to guarantee that you're gonna get all of the space back on your device that you can. And what I had to do to my iPad, because that alert kept showing up and I have tried everything else on this list and nothing is getting that data back. I have nothing kind of taking up space and yet I have a huge chunk of other space. I don't have Siri voices on there. I don't have, uh, I turned off like messages. Like I've blown away so many things to try to get that space back and I cannot do it. So the only surefire way to do that is to back up your device, whether to iCloud or to your Mac, reset your device, erasing all content and data, and then resetting up and restoring from that backup. It will take some time to do, especially if you have a bigger device, like half a terabyte iPhone. But if you do that, it will blow away everything in those caches and then redownload everything else. So you're gonna have everything that you need and nothing that you don't. It isn't fun, it isn't pretty, but it is the only way to guarantee you're gonna get the most space back. So that pretty much covers it on how to reclaim that other data that keeps getting cached on your iPhone or iPad. One other quick piece of advice, if you're an older device and you're maybe rocking a version of iOS 13, make sure you're updated to 13.6.1. Apple says there was a bug affecting prior versions in iOS 13 that were causing bloat in that other category of storage. So it only applies to those in iOS 13 before 13.6.1, but if you were on one of those versions, be sure to update to that latest version of iOS, specifically iOS 13.6.1, point one or later, and that should solve any issues you have with that other category expanding. So let me know what you guys think. Did this help you at all or claiming some storage on your iOS or iPadOS device? Let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and stay tuned to Apple Insider for more great tips, reviews, and news.